Oh, we've got a fairy on the call with us today. Sorry, guys. Uh, I am. Uh, yeah, right after this call, I'm going to the Halloween party. So I'm sorry. I'm dressed up as a fairy today. It is ridiculously cute. What's um? What are you doing? Uh, what's the the holiday party? Is it for the kids or is it for you or? Uh, it's like all together, adults with kids. That's awesome. Is it like a local local thing or is it through the school? Yeah, neighbors, neighbors. That is really really cool. I'm I'm jealous. The problem with my community is that we're the youngest people in my community by about twenty five years. Most of our neighbors have kids that are our age. Okay, so you can celebrate with them. With their kids, yeah. No, their yeah, kids don't come visit kids. them, though. You're their kids now. Yeah, no, I have had several of them adopt me. Um, like, the, the ones on just to the north of us have decided that we're, like, their grandkids. and Or their, their kids, and Bailey's, like, their grandkid. And <laughs> so if they see us, they, they wave, and they're like, where's Bailey? Bring Bailey out. Fine, we'll bring the uh bring the child. Um and uh there we go. Lauren, you're a co-host now. You're in charge. Sounds good. Nice. Um, but yeah, you know, it was interesting, uh Mila. Uh I know you just had your your interaction with the HOA. Um, my HOA was trying to pass a no rentals restriction in in my my community. And is it, is it I, I'm not involved in my HOA, but you best believe I went out there and I fought that thing. I'm like, you know, there, there are ways to do this. Like, yes, we don't want this to be 90%, you know, renters. Like it's going to be bad for home values, but like also like, let's say for instance, mm -hmm. you know, an employee dies at the wilds and I need to move down to the wilds for six months, like telling me I can't rent my home out yeah. is absolutely astronomical. Sorry. I know. But we, uh, which place does this restriction take place? Is it the in my my, community, my personal HOA community? They were trying to pass it, and so I went and fought it, and I got it uh, a hold placed mm -hmm. on it. So we'll see. We'll see what ends up happening. I mean, in uh, in the community where I invested, one of the condos, uh, they have restriction of twenty five percent, unless. Mm. Well, and what I if trying to avoid is people buying it to rent it out i'm like these are 600 700 800 thousand dollar homes nobody's buying those to rent out um like that's not that's not what exists uh like as one of the blood-sucking landlords who exists here in indiana uh like that's that's not what we're trying to do for the most part um and so like they're, they're trying to make rules around hey you have to at least have lived there for x amount of time and stuff like that and i'm like that fair but like telling people that they can't they can't rent their the home that they purchased. That just feels pretty un-American to me. I don't know. That feels very like I, I don't know, Russian or something. But shouldn't they do like gathering or meetings to ask for the feedback before they implement any? What was really interesting is they drafted all the, the proposal and like they were gonna push it through like it was nothing. And so I go to the meeting and they're like yeah. I think we can all agree we like our house values to be high. Yeah, I think we can all agree that um, that we we like knowing our neighbors. Yeah, I think we can all agree that we don't like rapists in our community. Yeah, I think we can all agree we don't want renters in our community. And that's where I was like, wait, hang tight, disagree. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, hang tight. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, well, and, and the argument I made I thought was interesting was that um, like a, a rental rate there is going to still be like three thousand dollars. I'm like, just because I was able to save up the hundred and damn it the hundred and fifty thousand dollars or whatever my down payment was on my house doesn't make me any better of a neighbor than somebody who who couldn't have saved that money up and and like the, the cost of my mortgage is the same it's a different class yeah so a different class of renter yeah we're not talking about uh we're not talking about you know four six two one eight or anything like that okay. sure sure how um i, I want to hear uh by the way how are you doing? Sorry to interject. How are you feeling? Oh, I'm actually feeling uh, now. Granted, I'm I'm half a drink into the day, so I'm feeling a little better. I've got a little bit of the um the Kentucky hug that's helping, but uh, I was pretty rough on Wednesday. I didn't let these guys see me. I, I just canceled my calls. Um, but you have one like, whole Wednesday, by the way. You should be out, right? 
Well, I usually have a call with um, uh, just with the team in the morning, and then I I hop off, and unless there's an emergency, which it seems like there are more emergencies recently. Um, I know. But so who uh, would want to find your time off? <laughs> otherwise, I will sit there because you need to have some break, you know. Otherwise, well, no. oh, oh, let me tell you, Mila, breaks are not a problem recently. I'm in so much trouble at home <laughs> because three weeks ago I went to California for my buddy's wedding. This uh, a weekend or two weekends ago, I went to uh, the USC versus Notre Dame game, and last weekend I went to Louisville with this guy and uh, and drank more than my body volume in liquor. Um, and, and I'm still convinced that they haven't caught up to me. They haven't got up to my level because I started at eleven o'clock, and uh, and you know they uh, well, they kind of it's like two or three days but you need like one week or 10 days like a longer I'll, period i'll take a vacation over the holidays for sure um i'll, I'll need it by then um, i'll hold you for that yeah. you promise and then i won't then i won't pick up <laughs> so uh but i want to hear mila uh i know you were working to change your property managers how did that go i mean i already made it uh was effective Excuse Two weeks ago, October the 10th. How's Marty doing with it? So I'm waiting for uh, for Marty to get me with uh, any repair estimate because I think I just received some contradicting information again. Um, so, you know, uh, Levine, you told me that it's a uh, very severe damage. Um, the bathtub was not functioning and I would need to change the whole ceiling of the garage and floor and all this good stuff, right? Uh, but then Marty told that um, he he sent his hand to me and he told that there's no problem with the bathtub. It was just a minor leakage from the washer that got fixed and there is no bulge or sagging in, on the ceiling. Uh, there is some stain, but it's not, act from, not from the active leakage, but something happened you know, a long time ago. Um, and so it was not that severe, as they explained to me earlier. So again, I didn't get any pictures, and they wanted to charge me 4K for something that I I don't know if it existed or not. Uh, but in any case, that's I think that's why it was my last drop of patience with with them to break. Unfortunately, well, that that fundamentally, I, like I don't know, I don't know if it's dishonesty from that company or just having not enough team members and like them not personally getting eyeballs on it and trusting their people. Mm -hmm. uh, there's there's a little bit of a disconnect there from a, a labor perspective. And I think there's a disconnect there from a um, an incentive perspective. If a property manager is charging a markup on bills, then of course they want your bills to be higher. Like there's mm -hmm. they're, like, that's, you know, they'd much rather you do a $4,000 job, them go make 400 bucks on it than if there's no markup and, um you know, and, uh, and, and, you know, it's just based on the, the rental received. So, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, but the problem uh, was also that I was asking to fix that repair seven weeks ago, right? And I was asking the follow-up, can you please send the person? But they did, didn't do anything up until the point of him getting back to me on Tuesday saying that there's emergency, the bathtub is not usable, and here's the bill. So I guess there are two components to that, right? First, not responding to the questions, like seven weeks just to get this leakage, whatever, um, fixed, right? And then after the fact, got into the situation where when emergency happened, yes, of course, if you don't fix anything for seven weeks, it can happen. Yeah. But plus, when I ask the pictures, because he explained that the whole ceiling is sag sagging and it's the ball, whatever ball should was you see. Uh, and, and, and so if Marty is saying that it didn't exist, like to me, it's like, I don't know where, like, I'll tell I you, I bet you, anymore. I bet you that the truth is halfway between the two. And the reason I say that is I happen to know, um, uh, know the handyman that, uh, that Marty uses and that guy, mm -hmm. he's a little bit of a character himself. Um, I don't think he's a bad human. Uh, he, I'm, I'm optimistic. he, no, it's not optimistic. How would you describe Pierre? um english yeah he's pretty english um and um yeah closer to australian than english um but uh yeah he he's just an interesting guy um he's out there 
a little bit. He, he's a weirdo. He's a weirdo, but he does good work. Mm-hmm. Um, he does solid work. Uh, good, I would yeah, not. He's not, a good handyman. It's a great, yeah, good handyman. But um, he he's not one of those people that is going to screw you over, upcharge, or say something's worse than it is. I think that there can be times where he might not be super thoughtful in what he says. Yes. Um. So I would say it's probably closer to what Marty's saying than what Liv Indy was saying. Yeah, and again, I don't want to say any bad things, but with me, unfortunately, we like I had major issues, right? First, so like I actually had drinks. I, with Kenny. With... I had drinks with Kenny the night that you fired him. Um, it was just funny timing, and um, <laughs> yeah, and I was like, yeah, I don't know Mila. I never talked to her before. Uh, no, I um. And I, I was kind of trying to, without using your name uh, or any of the other names of people who I've heard complaints about, explain to them that, hey, like, here's some of the issues. Like, I think you're a good human. I think you're, you're, you're like, there there are many bad actors here in Indianapolis. I don't think you're one of them. But, like, this is how it's perceived uh, from the outside. And I think he heard it. I think he I think he will make the, the changes. And I think the feedback you've given him actually hit him kind of hard um, in, in a very positive way that that he'll he'll use that to get better which is i think what you were trying to do like i i can't imagine you ever being a mean mean you know just mean to be mean and so um yeah i think i think that that's what's going to end up happening once it's all said and done well i'm glad if this feedback will help to improve um, his performance and his team and others as well because yeah. my unfortunately i have a very high level of tolerance i give people so many chances they can screw me up several times and i still allow them to do this but yeah. that was like, I got to the point where like, I'm sorry. No. <laughs> Seven weeks is too long. Yeah. And Seven I think weeks too long, the, yeah. Part of the problem is, is I don't know that they have enough knowledgeable people in a field that can assess a problem like that. So they automatically assume the worst so they can, you know, make sure that they're covered when it comes to, to price wise in case it's worse. So they may pick the, you know, the worst scenario out of the two um and hey if it is we're okay if it's not it's a win and that's how they're going to look at it but i do think and i and i know kenny um and i do think he's a good human but i don't think the i don't think the team that he has was was very well set up to to be helpful yeah and he scaled uh, too quickly that's the second that i wholeheartedly agree with and and i'll tell you something i, I i've learned about property management. And it's not necessarily about Livindi. Just I'm going to talk in general, general terms here. What I've learned is there's a lot of um hedge funds out there who are looking to consolidate prop- property management. And they're mm-hmm. buying property management companies. And I don't know why. Um, but they're spending a lot of money on a per door basis, like mm-hmm. four years of revenue expectation on a per year basis um or uh, pardon me on a per door basis for um for acquiring property management companies absolutely crazy crazy numbers so um i think what a lot of property managers may be in the business of is building businesses to sell Mm -hmm. so door count whether or not you can do a good job is more important in a lot of cases than um than actually you know building a cash flow business i see so basically you're saying that the owners are prepping for the exit strategy to sell the business and you're just um a couple of examples uh that i didn't understand until i had a couple other conversations more recently mm-hmm. and it's um it's been eye opening to to see actually like i was I was shocked at the valuations that uh, the, these private equity companies are putting on, uh, or the, these hedge funds are putting on um, on property management companies. It's it doesn't make sense. Like I understand property management now. I've gone deep. Like and, and Mila, I know know I've alluded to it to you. Like I've thought about getting into the property management space and still might do that. But when I look at the business, it is such a labor intensive business. Lauren would fire me immediately as a uh, a coworker if uh, if I decided to do that. So, uh, or at least if I decided to put her into it, she's had to, to property manage one property, and she's already going to pull her hair out. <laughs> hey, yeah. 
Prospect counts too. It's been two so far. All right, two. You just had to handle the eviction at Prospect. Yeah, which was a lot. But yeah, it's it's hard when you're face to face with the customers because, or I shouldn't say all customers because construction customers are easy. But it's hard to hard when you're it's hard when you are face to face with tenants. What's their home? Uh, we've got we've got a situation right now where we're self managing this one down in Bedford, and my God, these people. It's the cheapest unit I own, and it's not even close. And these people are the highest maintenance people I've ever met. And they just had their power turned off, and now they want us to turn their power on for them. So, um, Lauren, we're not doing that, by the way. And we're twenty. They're twenty three hundred dollars in the hole. Twenty six, I thought. Is it twenty six now? Twenty six hundred dollars in the hole on their electricity bill, and they called us up and said, "Hey, can you pay it?" I had a side conversation with Lauren. I'm like, Nick is not allowed to talk to these people. Because he will end up paying the damn bill. I said, he is not allowed to talk to them. <laughs> Property management sucks. It's a hard business. It is a hard business. I give a lot of credit to people who do it and do it well, like Marty. Yeah. Because I would be a bitter person. I agree. Marty's awesome. I agree. Yeah, profitability, I doubt that there's a lot of profit. No, there's no profit. Um, no. no profit. This is what I was calculating here and there. I'm like, no, like this business is not profitable. Like it's loss making for me. Maybe my calculation is wrong. He's not running it the way I would personally run it. Uh, I would charge a little bit more, and I would try to to um, to add incremental value um, to that situation. The way Marty runs the business, and I don't disagree with this, and you can actually look the way he runs his brokerage. Uh, he runs his brokerage such that he is ridiculously generous with the people that he works with, um, specifically the agents. Um, he has one of the most generous um, splits of any agency in all of Indianapolis. And I think it actually does him a little bit of a disservice. Uh, you know, while the people who are actually in there can appreciate it, it makes people, I, I think, fundamentally believe that they're actually not going to get the support that they do uh, for the the prices that they charge. Um, and so, yeah, no, the way Marty runs it, I don't know how the hell he he does it. Hmm. I wouldn't do it that way. Dave, what's going on in your world, buddy? You've been a, a silent observer. Letting you do the talking, just trying to pick up some knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> We can be your clubhouse. <laughs> uh, not too much. It's just been, it, it's been tough trying to find anything to buy. I've, I've had realtors call me offensive with my offers. Um, I just, I'm kind of exploring the idea of just going out on my own and just trying to, I, I got a year long subscription to batch leads. So I might just start skip tracing and trying to reach out to owners direct that are, you know, maybe in distress, tax liens, inherited properties, anything. I just, are you I'm not going to have enough of the builders out there. Um, my two rentals, the one tenant moved out and did about eight grand worth of damage. And I'm like, yeah, that shot two years worth of cash flow. So what we decided was, um, and it's funny, we're talking about, you guys were talking about property managers. So I don't know if you've met Lee Smith or talked to him. Yeah. Um, he manages my two properties. We're actually going out to the national RIA, uh, in Cincinnati next week together. Well, I'm going to meet him there. Um, he said, listen, you know, we could do a deep clean. Why don't you do maybe a lease option? He goes, it's a gamble. He goes, but I can tell you like 98% of them never, never come to fruition. Sure. The, the tenant can, can come for the money to buy the property. He goes, so do you want to do that? So I decided to do that. I got a $5,000 non-refundable deposit. Um, so now I have a little bit more cash flow or, or capital to work with in case something happens on the other property. So we did that for three years. Um, my other property that you walked, I guess a year ago, that tenant decided to renew the lease. We raised it 3%. Was that on Kenwood? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So it was right down the street from the one you did. Um, on oh, yeah, he told me about that. Paul told me about the one he did down the street when I met him. Yeah. 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 I think that was the first project he did for me. Yep, it was. Yeah. Damn you. Um, so that's, I mean, we had an issue with the air conditioning unit. I think I told you about that this summer. That's been fixed. Um, 3500 so Right now, Nick, it's just, it's, it's just been tough trying to find deals. What's that? How much did you spend on that AC? 35 five? No. Um, it was all in three. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. And that was with the, that was with the, so Lee, we were talking about, Lee does mark up his work. 
Um, he has a 20% management fee. So it ended up costing me three. He replaced the condenser unit. That was the only thing that needed to be done on the air. Oh, all right. Yeah, yeah, okay. That makes more sense. Yeah, I was going to say, shit. I go, yeah, no, on, this that, guy. Can I want, yeah, I was going to say, can I have your guy's number? Yeah, no, it, it was just it was just the condenser unit, um, not the whole unit. So like I said, there, you know, it's it's been quiet. It's the, the, the tenants are paying on time. Um, I have equity. They've gone up, which is which is wonderful. But uh, like I said, it's just been a, a shitty year to try and find deals and try to close things. I'm, like I just haven't been having very good luck with realtors. So are you um are you working with any wholesalers right now? So it's funny you bring that up. Um, I was talking with his name is Randy, and he used to be at Simply Wholesaling, but then I talked to Brooks Rothschild. Hate that guy. A couple of weeks ago, and I mentioned your name, and he goes, "Your voice sounded familiar." He goes, "I've heard you on Nick's call." So I guess they're all you guys are all connected one way or another. You're doing something out there. That's all I know. I'm not doing anything with them. Like we handle a couple of their rehabs. Uh, Brooks, okay. uh, Brooks is my neighbor. Like he lives probably okay. five minutes. Okay. It's me. Uh, okay. It was two minutes if I drive, and um, and he's a really a good human being. Randy left Simple Wholesale, and actually the two of them now are yes. doing their thing from a wholesale perspective absolutely crushing it. I I'm really excited about what they're, they're bringing. Uh, we actually just marketed a couple of their deals. I think Mila saw it within our community, um, that, that we, we didn't review. We aren't, we aren't condoning or like saying you should buy those houses. We, yeah. you know, we, uh, we, we've potentially looked at them ourselves, but, um, we were just passing those through, um, but they're doing good stuff. Um, they actually swooped us on a deal that I was kind of pissed about the other day, but, um, <laughs> they, they beat us to it like we were uh literally getting an inspector through a house and they got under contract okay. but um uh simple wholesale is still a good option i don't if i was a betting man i i would say that their deal flow is probably going to go down a little bit um right. say, what simple seasonality um no um no uh that's right. not, not you can just leave it at that that's fine yeah. Uh, mainstay is, um, mainstay is still doing good stuff with that said, um, you've got to kind of, you know, be, be careful when, when working with them, you want to make sure that you're able to get an inspection, uh, make that part of anything that you're doing with them. Uh, they didn't used to allow that back in 2020. Um, they were like, Hey, sight unseen, basically just go buy the house. It was a different market than we're in today. They've got to uh, compete a little bit more. And so just make sure that anything that, uh, that you do with them, you get an inspection including a main line. You always get the main line inspection. Um, there's a group we've been working with recently. Again, I, I don't have any firsthand experience with them, but we've been analyzing a lot of their deals. It's called New Western. Oh, yeah. Uh, I've they heard of them. I looked at a property that was on the MLS for the, by them. Yeah, so they tend to churn and burn their people pretty hard so that you're never going to have like the same person for multiple deals in a row. Yeah. But, um, but they tend to get a lot of deals. Uh, they had one in Carmel that I was kind of interested in the other day, um, but I I was too flu ridden to uh, to deal with it and didn't didn't feel like uh, didn't feel like fighting too hard. But they tend to get a lot of a lot of deals. But again, with all the wholesalers, you need to be your own best advocate and make sure that you are not getting into a situation where you can't do an inspection, where you can't do a, um, a, a, a you know get a contractor through. Uh, and then the other thing that a lot of these guys do that I absolutely hate. Absolutely, I think it's the the worst thing in the world is um, to do a, um, a a blind bid situation um, where they'll say, "Hey, this house is a hundred thousand dollars. Give us your highest and best, and go compete with every other uh, buyer out there." Hate that process so much. It, if ever anybody asks me to do that, I just give them their price if if their price makes sense. Uh, that's the highest I'll go. Uh, I'll offer lower, but you know the highest I'll go is their offer price because. I I'm into building long-term relationships with a wholesaler and like, do you, just tell me the price. Like, Hey, are somebody offered you more? Fine. Like I'll go and I'll see if it makes sense for me to go a little bit higher, but for a, uh, an individual to try to maximize their profit on a per deal basis against me when I'm, I'm trying to build a long-term relationship feels like a, um, a, a just a bad experience. And it's, like, I'm always going to feel like a loser in that situation. Yeah. I, I, from what I understand was simply, and I had a talk when Randy was there, like they do it a little bit different in the sense of where if you put a deposit down, if you if the deal doesn't make sense, if the rehab comes in higher, you can get your money back. Mm -hmm. So I, I would much rather, I can't talk, much rather work with a wholesaler like that than the mainstay brothers. And again, I'm not saying Clay and Evan are, are nice people. I don't, but I would rather go down that route. Deals. Lots of good deals. And they help um, a lot. people get started. 
What's that? They help a lot of people get started, but I totally agree. Simple is an easier, they are closer to realtors than yeah. mainstay. Yeah. The mainstay is a little bit more of a cutthroat type yeah. of, of wholesaler yeah. versus simple. And very honestly, very honest review, simple's deals don't tend to be as good. Like, like it's just the truth of the matter. And, and I think it, it comes down to how they approach each deal. Mainstay is a little bit more cutthroat, so they get a little bit better deals. Yeah. Simple is a little bit there. I mean, the, the, everyone there is like a, a man of God. Uh, like all of these yeah. people. I, I've, I've, I saw Brent's thing. I guess his goal is to build like some sort of church. I, I know what you're talking about. I saw the, yeah. I saw his podcast. Yeah, no, he's an incredible man. Yeah. Um, But the, there, there are pros and cons to that when you're a customer of that, that incredible man. Um, yeah. And uh, now that said, I've probably bought more deals from Simple Wholesale because I think they're, they're easier to work with. I think we did six last year, six or seven. Yeah, I think we were the, either number one or number two buyer last year. Are you still, um, are you picking up any rentals, Nick, or is it mostly flipping right now? Ooh, good question. Um, I am largely flipping today. I'm still picking up the occasional rental okay. with, generally speaking, like multiple exit strategies. I still want to pick up as many rentals as I can, but um, but given the fact that I've gone full time, uh, one of the quickest ways for me to turn equity to cash is to sell versus to to do the refi approach. And my objective here over the next several years is to to allow my wife to, if she wants to, to leave her W two job, and uh, so generating significant revenue through through business activity like uh, like flipping, like uh, working on the off leash construction side allows me to um to make that more of a, a realistic thing versus the rental side so i'm generally i would say kind of doing a buy three keep one situation would yeah. be like like the, the one we were talking about in bedford i had every intention of holding that one um i don't think we're probably gonna end up doing that <laughs> i think we'll probably end up selling that once we get them out of there but um but that's kind of my objective is to to buy more rentals um but i am trying to minimize my my number of rentals i've actually lease optioned Speaking okay. of option, least optioned a large part of my portfolio with the intention of trying to get rid of a lot of my lower end stuff okay. and up to um to more A class, which again doesn't look as good on paper, but um I'm I'm I hate evicting people, man. Like it it really leaves a a a mark on my soul every time I have to do that, and um so every every opportunity I can can have to not do that, I'm gonna take. Yeah, knock on wood. I I, ha I haven't had that um, oh, it, happen, but I, I do it, have a lot. If, if, if the longer you do this, like it will, oh, yeah. yeah. No, I'm not. I'm not naive to the fact, but I, I do feel. I mean, I, I I hopped on a little bit late, but you know, obviously going through property managers, I I do feel sort of lucky. Like I follow Lee very closely on Facebook. I feel like he posts a lot about some of the challenges that are going on out there That's with certain landlords. Um. You know, I, I feel very fortunate, like I said, you know, to take 20% on these repairs, just knowing that it's done and not really having to worry about stuff. You know, I, I think that's give me peace of mind. But to your point, at some point, yes, I probably will have to evict. Um, but I also, like I said, I, I think I want to try and go the route of maybe trying to talk to sellers direct, Nick. I, I Not that I don't trust realtors out there, but I just feel as though I'm, I'm just kind of spinning my wheels a little bit. I haven't really had a good the best, the best experience, if you will, with realtors out there. Yeah. Um, I have lots of thoughts on realtors. Um, and there's a chance a couple of them watch this one uh, after the fact. Once I, I don't want to get you in trouble. I'm not trying. No, I'm no, just no. saying like for I, me, no. I've had a different experience. That That's all. I, I no, I, and I don't think you're wrong. I don't think your experience is wrong. I think in today's market, uh, there's, a, there's a fundamental problem with on-market properties. And it's that anybody who puts a deal on the market fundamentally has options. Uh, they have time. Uh, they, In most cases, they have a really good interest rate. So they've got time to figure out what they want to do. And for the, with that in mind, they're not necessarily as willing to you know, bend over backwards to make the buyer happy. Uh, and that's what realtors have to sell. Uh, and so selling the distressed property, it's really hard or hard thing to, to get done in that scenario because the buyer uh, wants a price because they've got an end price that they've got to hit. The seller 
they might not have distress, especially given that most of them have incredibly good interest rates from the last several years. Right. So I don't think you're wrong there. Um, now there are bad, bad business practices in the, um, the, the agent space that I might have called out in the Indiana state group and gotten myself into a little bit of a pissing match, but, um, but that, I, that's not necessarily what, what I'm referring to. I, I think you're right. I think agents are in a hard spot right now. And I think an agent who is smart in today's market uh, has kind of a 360 degree view of everything that's occurring. Uh, one, they've got to definitely have pro property management within their, their house. I think that's a super smart approach because property management is essentially a really small annuity on every property that they do. They have to have relationships with contractors uh, that they, they know, like, and trust who can, can get things done. But then on top of that, if they're not smart enough to understand that they need to be working with wholesalers who are getting these distressed properties, the properties that the people don't have options, the properties that, you know, hey, they're in financial uh, upset, the house is falling over, you know, there, there's a, a, a death in the family. Like, there's a lot of reasons why wholesalers exist. And yeah. While they are a little bit of bottom feeders, they do provide a service. They provide yeah. liquidity to the system. And if an agent isn't willing to be looking at that and be marketing those things, then they're probably missing a big opportunity and they're going to miss a lot of buyers. And the, the downstream ramifications of that are that they're not going to get the property management, which is a small annuity. They're not going to get the sales on those, which is a much larger chunk. And so that's that's my quick take is, Direct to seller is great. Uh, we've done a little bit of that, not necessarily uh, us calling, although there's some of that, but uh, us essentially marketing ourselves as, as buyers of distressed properties. And it's worked okay for us. We've bought four or five properties that way. Uh, and it you know, has more than paid for itself. Um, but it's a lot of work, particularly if you're going to go out there and be the one to call these numbers, you're going to get a lot, even our warm leads. People reach out to us and then ghost us. Imagine how hard it is if, you are calling them out of the blue and you're trying to you know, buy their house out of the blue. So it's interesting to bring it up because with batch leads, I had a chance to demo it a little bit. Um, another investor let me try it. And I mean, you can just click a button and it sends out a text. I mean, you can text a hundred people in probably under five minutes wow. or you can call. There's a batch dial that you can do that as well. So there's a bunch of different ways that to your point, Nick, you can market. Um, and like I said, the, for me, it's like, I'm happy to try something different. I've asked Lee, I said, Lee, if I found something to wholesale, I don't know how to wholesale. Do you know how to wholesale? He goes, yeah, if you do, just let me know. I'd be happy to help you. You can join venture, try something like that. Um, but Dude, back to real things. Like goddamn uh, contract. Like, What's that? Just hop on office hours. I've got contracts. Do you? I didn't, I didn't, oh, well, I didn't know you, I didn't know you did that. But yeah, I, I'm happy to reach out to you and ask. Um but it's even back to like the whole realtor thing, Nick. Like, so it's funny. I'm married to a math teacher and they're all about showing their work. And I'm like telling my wife, I said, Kate, I'm even showing my numbers to these realtors. I said, I'm not like pulling these numbers out of you know where. And so it's it's just, it's almost like, you know, you have to get it like 70%, even 60% to try and make it work if you want it to cash flow for a rental. Some of these properties, like when you look at the actual work that needs to be done. And again, I know you and, and Paul, um, or I think Paul gave me some rough numbers that night I met him. But I can't see the electric. I can't see the plumbing. So I'm just looking at it from a rough perspective saying, here's what I can see. And every realtor that I've talked to, the few I've tried, I've been putting offers in. So it's not like I'm afraid to pull the trigger. But then it's like, Dave, you know, that's a really low price. All right, then I'll go to this. I'll go to the, the, the listing agent myself then if you don't want to do it and see what they say. Who are you working with from an agent perspective? <clears throat> so I I was working with Barb Getty. I ha she's She's gone dark on me. Um, I started talking with Gloria Gear. Um, she was she was on she was on um one of the bigger pockets as an agent. So like I reached out to talk to her. Um, and she's really the one that's like sending me anything other than myself going on the MLS myself and looking at properties. So two people who I, I recommend you reach out to. Um, three people who are gonna say Bo. Uh, one's Bo. I know, uh, get on his email list. He's got decent, uh, a, a good email uh, that he sends out. This is hot sheet. He's got, you know, so, some decent properties on there. Tyler, oh, God. other one, uh, Tyler is uh, with Roots Realty. I think he does a really, really good job. Um, Tyler at Roots Realty? Yeah. Tyler Lingle is his last name. Yeah. L -I okay. Really -I good. L-I-N-G-L-E. Uh, he's young. He's hungry. Um, and I, I think he's a badass. 
Uh, Cindy is with Just Live Indy, uh, so don't throw anything at me, Mila. But um, while I don't necessarily think she's um, she's, she's like, great, I don't have yeah, I, I love yeah. her. Um, so I used her, and I like Cindy. I think she's wonderful. I I I feel as though maybe I'm wrong saying this. Like when I showed you, she was still kind of new, and she was still learning indie. And I kind of want a realtor that's like out there that knows where to go. Um, so that's the reason why I said it. But if she's, I, I, like I said, she tried to sell my house. I bought my first property from her. Oh, I'm I forgot. Happy, you know, have yeah. that conversation. She's she's worth at least having on the radar. Um, mm -hmm. and, and you don't have to be exclusive. You're not getting married. You're not right. like Paul here getting married here in a couple of days. You're, uh, you get to to date around a little bit. You get to just have some fun. Be ho. <laughs> okay. I'll reach out to them, um, but I still think I might give it a try just going direct. And like I said, if I do find something, Nick, I'm happy to say, hey, listen, no. I might want to wholesale this. Are you interested? You know, do you want a joint venture? Do you want the pro like just I've never done it and I'm willing to try it because, again, you can make some decent cash or maybe I can find a better deal that way. Yeah. Re and realistically, like, hell, we might buy it. Like you have boots on the ground here of people who are willing to go at least walk yeah. the property and take a look at it and be like, dude, you got to run or like, hey, this is actually a good deal. Like. We think it's going to take fifty thousand dollars to rehab. Go negotiate based on that fifty thousand dollars of rehab. We've got uh, even if Paul can't walk it, we've got somebody else who walks properties for us, who's ninety percent of Paul, um, and uh, does does an incredible job of, um, of of kind of doing that. So like you have boots on the ground uh, of people who are willing to to help out. And Brooks made that comment to me on the phone. He goes, I told him, you know, I mentioned names and things like that. And he basically just said to me, he goes, you know, a lot of good people out there to help you. And I'm like, I know I just can't find a deal. So it's, I'm, I'm comfortable on the one side. It's just a challenge on the other, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <clears throat> absolutely. No, I think, I think that's a really, um, it's an interesting approach. You've got the right people here. Make sure you're analyzing it with incremental margin on top of it. And the reason I say that is, no, I, I'm bad at this. Uh, I, I want to help people. And Paul was alluding to this earlier. And I, I like want to solve people's problems. And I'm kind of not willing to hold my own line a little bit. Uh, but if you're buying something direct, you've got to do a little better on it than yeah. if you're you're going like an on-market deal, because you might have to market it to somebody like me and go make a quick markup fee or something on there. So sure. um, to just make sure that you're you're giving yourself enough fat on there for it to be worthwhile to take on the problem. Well, to your point too, Nick, I mean, even when I was talking to Gloria, she goes, what are your expectations for rentals? And I said, if I can break even right now, I said, I'm not looking to make $200 a door. I said, at some point, interest rates will come down. But if I can break even or make a dollar, I'm thrilled. But it's just very hard to get that right now in this environment. I I totally, totally agree, uh, especially on a burr situation. If you're highly burring that thing and you're, you're levering that thing up, shit, man. So I will tell you, and maybe I told you this. So Lee came to me in May and he found a property. So he buys some of his property subject too. And I've been also reading a little bit about that. Property was worth, ARV was probably around a hundred, Nick. He was getting it for 30. Oh. It, it needed 30 in repair. And I did the, the burn analysis on my, my template that I had here. I would be able to cash out. Like I would have gotten all my money back. But or we would have cash flow twelve dollars, and Lee's like, "I want cash flow of four hundred dollars." So the deal didn't work for it didn't work for me because of the way I wanted to do it. So I mean, it was his deal, so he did what he wanted. But you see what I'm saying? So like, it would have burned perfectly, but because he wanted the cash flow, twelve dollars wasn't going to work for him, so he kept it himself. That makes sense. Man, I want to fight him again. Like he's a great guy, and like I said, I was I was flattered that he came to me because I've always been afraid to ask to partner with people. I've always been hesitant to ask that. And he just came right out and said, "What do you think of this?" And I was like, "This is the first legitimate deal I've seen in a long time. Like I love it." But again, it just he had a different vision of what he wanted, and that's fine. But at least he asked, and it was practice for me. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Man, I haven't seen many houses that only require thirty right now. No. It's been a minute since it was. Well, again, he was taking it over subject too. So my understanding was the I'll owner me, owed yeah. 30 grand on it. I'm talking What's about that? rehab. We haven't seen much that is that low in today's market. I'm expensive. Yeah, he this guy's gotten expensive. Uh, no, and, and it's funny. I actually just wrote a blog post today uh, about how um, 2017 scopes of work aren't valid today. Uh, yeah. 
Uh, like I, and, and I use 2017 because that's when I started doing this. And I started yeah. looking back at some of my old scopes of work and I'm like, God damn, everything's gotten expensive. Yeah. Flooring is like twice as expensive as it was back in the day. Yeah. Uh, you know, drywall paint is, you know, 50% more expensive. Like, and it's, it's it, yeah, well, it's, it's labor, it's materials yeah. have gotten, uh, have just gotten crazy. Yeah. Uh, and it was just, it was kind of funny uh, as I was looking back at some of that stuff. Um, but yeah, I, I remember I used to be able to do an entire house, maybe not like a whole lot of infrastructure, but like a, a lot of a house used to be able to get done for like 45. And now that same amount is probably like 60, uh, 65 in that ballpark. Um, yeah, but what would you say is the difference? Between... Oh, the quality is different. Like I'm not, uh, we're not talking about quality. Okay. <laughs> quality is different today. <laughs> I have higher expectations. I'm not in the 46218. Um, <laughs> I, I, is that uh, a rough area, Nick? I, didn't answer, I, like, I see a ton of those homes for sale on uh realtor and zillow and again i've i kind of i'm, I'm more intrigued by four six two 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 but there's a ton of four six two one eights on the on the mls right now well here's what i'll actually tell you like the photos don't do justice paul do you want to talk a little bit about the bates hendrix situation the what is bates hendrix so there was a house. So we're, we're flipping a house right now in Bates Hendricks. We just hit the market. It looks beautiful. It's like the best house we've ever done. I would say in terms of like quality of finish, you can look it up. It's 1410 South Alabama. Mm -hmm. oh, you, I've, so I got your email about it. It looks oh, great. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's absolutely lovely. Uh, we haven't found the right buyer for it yet, but like it, like it is, it's as lovely a house as exists in four six uh, in, in, pardon me, not four six two in it, in, uh, in Bates Hendricks. There's no, there's, there's not nicer there. It could be equally nice. We, we did everything right. And so we saw a house that was bigger down the street from us. It had an extra bedroom. It was literally a block, maybe oh, yeah. a block and a half away. Yeah. We walk over to this house and I was like, hey, we were, happened to be there with my agent. I'm like, hey, can you like book us a, a tour of this house here real quick just so we can walk it? You want to talk about like what we saw there? Yeah. So pictures wise looked like phenomenal, like scary. Like, wow, this house is smaller and it's going for much more money and so forth right up to the point where we opened up the door and i've always told nick i said nick please do never believe in pictures they're just deceiving um we literally walked into the house and the house started flowing Falling. downhill um the quality of work it was terrible um, yeah i mean in my book it was a rental it was rental grade yeah uh like so the stairs were were crazy to get up they were like this this long like you had to you had to walk on your tiptoes like a yeah. 1910 stairs yeah the uh the upstairs were was two different levels if you remember there was oh, yeah. on the same level uh we went from like butcher block to really expensive courts that was weird that yeah that was super weird um the choice of cabinets that they put in there were um bottom grade. Well, they were garage grade. That's what they that's what you would put in your garage. Huh. Uh and I'm like, wow. Like I felt I like walked out of that house thinking Bama's gonna sell in like 24 yeah. hours. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, so yeah, pictures are very deceiving. So you have to be careful. Um there are things like we can look, we've done this so much that you know we can spot almost anything uh for the most part but we can spot a rewire in most houses today yeah we can that's that's become a skill that i didn't have before i met paul but like i can look i can literally just look at the wall like the texture of a wall i'll be like that's a rewire mm -hmm. like you'll know when it's been it's been a long time <laughs> yeah but it's you know, almost especially in the in a two one eight area, you're gonna have to look at it as I'm doing a full rewire, I'm doing full plumbing. Um, you know, most of your money's gonna be spent where you don't even see it, yeah. and and that's where, in that in that area code, unfortunately, that's where you're going to be at, uh, which doesn't leave a whole lot of money for lipstick stuff. Uh, or for beautification um but at the end of the day you know at least the house will be safe it's just a matter of does the numbers work for you yeah. uh, after you do all the safety stuff 
Mila, on the other hand, just goes and buys new builds in that area for crazy low prices. Yeah, yours was a new build, right? I'm not remembering that wrong. Your build, yeah, was the 2018 or 2019. Awesome. Hmm, I didn't know that. Yeah, that was that was a slam dunk, man. No, we'll see. But I need to change my strategy of buying. So four six two two two. Where's that one? I'm not. I'm not able to place that one. That's over near um like Hallville Speedway. I'm kind of trying to go more north towards the racetrack. So Speedway is actually a great area to be. I honest. love Speedway, but it's th those houses, uh, Paul. I mean, to cut you off, but like if I see a house for ninety. I'm analyzing it. It's a two bedroom, one bath rancher. I like them. And I'm still getting, everyone's taking it at asking price from what I found out. So they're, they're tough to get, but I like that area a lot. I'll let Nick jump in here after I ask you this question. When you're analyzing these houses with the square footage, are you trying to add another bathroom or half bath mm. to them to maybe bump up your ARV? No, I'm analyzing them to see if I can get them to cash flow and rent. So um, that's, that's kind of what I'm looking at first. Yeah, Not so, necessarily, maybe some light rehab. I haven't seen anything that's heavy rehab. Well, if you do find things that are heavy rehab, adding that extra bath makes such a, even a half bath makes such a difference on, on rent. It's astronomical. Um, and so, you know, you find a 1200 square foot uh, to one, you can probably sneak an extra half to a full bath in there. Okay. Uh, potentially a master suite. Um, you're looking at a 1400 square, square foot three one. You're definitely finding an That's extra half or a full a full bath. Um, and so bath. that changes the value of that home fairly substantially. It changes the rent. Getting that extra bath for whatever reason makes a huge difference on the rent. Um, okay. So that's something to, to really take a look at. I mean, that's the first thing our team looks at. Like almost always they'll see a two, one, even, you know, they'll find a two, one, 500 square foot house. No bank. Yeah. Paul will find an extra bath. Don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> Thanks guys. <laughs> um, and so that, that's really the number one thing that we look for is to change the the class of the property very substantially. It's, it's funny bringing that up because in my criteria, so I have a buy box of what I'm looking for. And then I also have my criteria too, of like, you know, Hey, here's what I want to do, but and what I'll send to the realtors, I'll say, hey, is there anywhere I can add square footage, meaning to your point, a bedroom or a bath? I mean, I almost feel like having the criteria, Nick, and maybe I'm wrong, like realtors don't even read it. They just set you up on a list and they send you what comes to the market and bam, that's it. I would say a, a lot of realtors do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you're not, if you're not responsive, then, then that's all you're going to get. If you're responsive and you say, hey, like this doesn't work because of X, Y, Z, but like, thank you um but like can you can we tweak it then that makes you a little bit more front of mind but um it, it's very much the the squeaky wheel gets the grease situation with agents I know. yeah um yeah yeah but i think maybe looking outside the box a little bit and and trying to find that extra value add. Uh, value add the half bath uh a mask can you know is there room to do a master suite with an extra bathroom uh, you know, you may find yourself where you could probably make a little bit better uh, money on it versus just walking away from every single project. That's a that's a good idea because I know Nick had a chance to walk Kenwood, but that's what we did at that property that down the street from where you did, Paul. We made a master suite where the ba bedroom and bathroom were connected. And when I bought it, it was a four bedroom, one bath. Well, the one bedroom was so small, we just made it a second bath. So in that instance, we did value add, but to your point, maybe I should really just try to say, hey, where can you add value? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's that should be what you focus on. The other thing, and this is something Bo has done historically a couple of times for himself and for clients, is um, finding extra units. So converting a garage. It's not always easy. It's not always cheap, but that does make a huge impact on cash flow. For instance, um, like if Paul uh, went, walked in there, sees a garage, two bedroom garage, there's the, the potential of one, either converting that into living space for the main house or two, turning that into its own separate unit. You probably have to do that in more of like an Airbnb type of situation mm -hmm. in most situations. But, you know, with exceptions, mm -hmm. it's a way of um, adding an extra unit. It might cost to finish a garage, probably, you know, a, a little mm -hmm. studio, like 30, 30, 30, yeah, 30, 40. Um, and you might get an incremental 600, $700 worth of 
rent on that, which, you know, if not more uh, on a short term rental. And if you do something like that, then that's 2% deal right there. That's pretty fantastic. You have any uh, books or things you can recommend on how I, I don't know much about short term or medium term rentals, Nick, I've always kind of stayed long term, but I, I wouldn't know the first thing about Airbnb, to be honest with you. Hire a good property manager um is really what i i've learned uh what's funny is on our the, the membership the closed membership and mila can attest to this we had somebody on who uh, actually does self-manage created his own property management company and the amount of detail and the amount of work that he's putting into each one of these listings is quite quite high hire somebody who knows what the hell they're doing get okay. the heck out of their way okay uh, it was a really good conversation uh, too. Uh, his name's Abhijit. Uh, he's at House of Inns, House of the Inns, House of the Inns. The Lord of Inns. Lord, Lord of the Inns. Lord of the Inns. There we go. Thank you. Uh, Lord of the Inns dot com. And um, uh, he would be somebody who who does really good work out here. Bo is a uh, short term uh, rental manager as well, who I I highly highly recommend. He actually just converted his old house into a two unit and has moved out of it now, but uh, is renting off both of those houses. And he actually rents two of my houses right now on a short-term rental basis and mid short-term midterm. But yeah, don't, don't try and learn it, hand it off to somebody good, learn it from them. And if they do a good job, great, let them keep running it. Or if you decide you could do better, um, you know, learn it over time and, um, and take it over. That's what the uh, the Lord of the Inns did. So Nick, did you actually coach him how to do that? So he, I'm gonna he was saying that he actually acted as a as a, his business coach, and he is like he's the, your biggest fan, right? This is what um, I got. Um, I'm gonna show just how much of a jackass I am. I um over the last six years and now really it's only been the last four years or so that i've been like coaching people and trying to help people um i have booked one-on-ones with over 700 people and so um it just free one-on-ones with people over time uh and you know this doesn't include office hours and stuff like that and so uh and that actually doesn't include the um all the people i, I spoke to when i was at meta the like 200 or 300 people that showed up to all my different events um and so I've talked to over 700 people and I, I would just hop on the phone and I would let people talk about their, their situation. I talked about mine. And, um, so I'm going to be honest, I don't remember my first conversation. Apparently it was impactful. Um, and such that he, he was willing to reach back out and seek advice and, and all of that. But yeah, I, um, I'm a total jerk and that I don't, um, yeah. I have a lot of the same conversation and they all kind of blur together at a certain point. And so um, it's hard for me. So I can't attach too much to any one person because if I do uh, like from that first conversation, if I do, I'll be wildly disappointed because 90% of people don't ever do anything. And, um, and really my objective with all of this over the years has been to make a, a ripple effect. And clearly it's worked because, you know, somebody like an Abhijit, he uh, he's gone out there and he's impacted a ton of people. He's now coaching people himself. Like, how cool is that? That, you know, I've had that kind of ripple effect out to his people. And then I'm going to take credit for all of his people and then all the people that they help. And then <laughs> like that, that's how that works. Right. But um, but yeah, I can't attach too much um, too much to any of one of those first calls. And um, I because I know most of them aren't going to do anything. Um, but it's been it's been fun. It's been it's been different recently. Uh, because I I have a way of seeing the funnel, whereas I didn't have a funnel before um, to all of the people that I talk to. Now I'm kind of in a position where it's like, hey, like, you know, if you're interested in construction, I've got off leash construction. If you're learning about, you know, if you just want to learn more about what we do, hey, you can check out our website. Like we've got more stuff there. So it's a little bit different today that I can see as people move through and see the impact. So um, yeah, uh, back in 2020, I was I was just an idiot who was talking to people on the internet. I mean, you're so impactful. You should be proud of yourself that you were transforming people's lives. And okay. yes. And so you're creating this, you know, legacy because. Yeah. Mila, I want you to know my objective is I want to impact a million people in pursuing their financial independence. I think that that's a, a that, that is fundamentally my goal. Uh, it's not, it's not my, vivid it. I can't do it in three years. 
but that that fundamentally is my goal is to help people along that journey a million people along that journey and i'm, I'm counting all of the people that you're going to impact all the people that dave's going to impact here um yeah i'm, I'm taking forward and reaching milestone i got a ways to go nick but i appreciate the uh the, the uplifting comment <laughs> yeah absolutely uh all the people that this guy's going to uh to go out there once he leaves me and decides to go out on his own um i uh, uh all the people he's going to impact and help along the way like yeah i'm i'm absolutely taking credit for that 100 percent. yeah yeah what else i got three minutes here before i make uh paul do a handle pull here on this elijah craig question yeah what's going on do you have a chance to take a look at the deck that i shared what the... uh, regarding ai in real estate I didn't get a deck from you. It's on Slack. Oh, where where did you send? When did you send it? I sent a general folder uh, when we had a last session. Was it Friday? Yeah. I did not have a chance to take a look. Should I do, should I do it now? Uh, no, I mean they're they're long decks. They're about seventy pages. Uh, so I wanted to take you to take a look uh, yourself and Lauren maybe. So the reason why I'm saying, so I attended this event, AI in real estate in Jacksonville was local. I mean, of course, we covered a lot more on site rather than you see in the deck. But actually, um, all the people, if whether they're in real estate or not, they utilize AI. It's yeah. not only Chad GPT 4.0, but also like for marketing. Canva is really impactful. So they do like text to image, text to the uh, to video thing. They shorten the video. And so they're doing it quick and so bright that they convert leads really to sales. Like this is really impactful. And what people do on social media, I just took a look because there were 70 people in the room and they were traveling from New York, you know, from Michigan, like from, from Texas, like forever, right? And they were showing their pages, what they do with social media. I'm like, damn, how do you do it? And they're like, with AI, of course, for me, it's one click. And it's really impactful. And so they were sharing the tips. I'm like, OK, I need to share with Nick. Maybe he can utilize it with his marketing companies because it's getting easier. Like, there's no need to add. Uh, there's no need to you know, hire this marketing specialist designers. Uh, but you can actually do it yourself or even VA. Um, but it's, I've, got, it's, I've got a marketing it's, intern who I can, I can toss that on. She's, uh, she, she's a little resistant to a lot of the AI stuff. She didn't like the first AI thing I sent her away. So okay, but, that one was very difficult. It was not difficult. I created cool videos in like five seconds. Uh, if I can create a cool video, she weren't that cool. <laughs> Sorry. But uh -huh. in any case. They the were videos for social media for what we were looking for. How about that? And they also were saying, like, I know we're kind of conservative people and, and we are fans of Instagram, whatever. Like, I'm not with social media at all. Like, I created a Facebook account just in order to be hired to for Facebook. But in any case, I know that people go wild on Instagram, you know, like on the website. But also, they kind of don't spend much time on TikTok, which is a mistake. Because there is a big, um, you can do big sales on TikTok as well. So well, they kind of feel like. Do they really? It yeah. feels to me like TikTok, and maybe it, this is just what it was like a couple years ago, but it was just a bunch of kids dancing. Yeah, it's not anymore. Is that not what that is? Apparently, you Got can it. find articles from brain, like about brain surgeries, any topics. They're doing a lot of money. And so like serious topics as well, business marketing, whatever. So TikTok, yes, as well. You need to be active there. She's um, on. You gotta huh? call next Friday. What next Friday? What? So uh, we have a social media call every Friday morning. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah. So take a look. I hope that you will find it helpful. I, just, I literally I took it down as a note to myself here. Paul can attest to it. As mm -hmm. as you said that, I'm like review uh, Mila's decks. Please, please. I Thank think you. It's gonna be I appreciate that. Sure. Everything for you. Perfect. All right. Have a great weekend. Go enjoy your party. We will talk to you. Go to the party. Yes. Bye. Bye.